This is Dave Keyes, and I want to take a look at uh, the Panda algorithm in particular. And the reason for that is because Panda has a reputation for being one thing, and it has a function of being something quite more than that one thing that is one of its attributes. So let's look at the difference between Panda as a ranking algorithm and a penalty algorithm. Penalty algorithm gets a lot of focus. The ranking gets very little. It's very seldom thought of in a positive aspect, like there are things that you want to do that Panda likes. Everyone talks about what Panda dislikes. Fewer people talk about what Panda likes. In terms of SEO, a lot of people pay attention to, and should, pay attention to, in the context of Panda, content on your website, penalties on your website, positive links to your website, not so positive and negative links, although that goes into the Penguin algorithm, not Panda. Uh, competitors with your website, local search, if that's applicable in your industry, which often in some industries it's not so applicable, like real estate, very little seven-pack local results for real estate terms. Even searches for real estate agents are often relegated to the big syndicate sites. As you work on your website and try to focus on these factors, Google moves things around almost arbitrarily. And sometimes it seems like there's no rhyme or reason, but there is a rhyme and a reason. And the starting point for the understanding of what that is is looking at the fact that Google doesn't care about your website, not one bit. It really is not concerned with whether you succeed or not and in fact, Google CEO Eric Schmidt said in 2008 at a speech where people were asking questions along these lines that we don't really want you to succeed in attempting to game the algorithm, that was, um, but to go and create content. It's your job to create content, and our job is to arrange content in a way we see fit. And that's really what this is about, is Google putting results on a website that they own that they want to attract people to go to the website, come back to the website, spend time on the website, and eventually spend money through the website, in their case, through their ad programs. Now, Google is all too happy to have people distracted from anything that has to do with manipulating search results in a way that they can not provide the best result they deem best to their audience and so they prefer to have things picked and done in their way and everybody else is trying to get visibility on a search engine that Google is focused on a different goal than all the other people. Now Google has a number of things that penalize websites and you could call them the police force and they are commonly known by names like Panda, Penguin, Hummingbird and various optimization filtering. And in the context of Panda, there's been a lot of focus on Panda penalizing sites because of what it doesn't like in terms of layout, the ratio of ads to content, or the amount of content, thin content, duplicate, over-optimization, under-optimization. These are all standard topics of a lot of focus on the Panda algorithm and even Google's head of web spam. Um, until he moved out of that position. Matt Cutts talked a lot about high-quality content and how Panda will penalize low-quality content. And so that became as pretty much a theme of <coughs> truth. So that became pretty much a theme of truth, whether or not it was the truth about what Panda is. It was enough to promote that idea that Panda penalizes websites and it's something you want to avoid. Now there is a core focus of Panda according to its own patent filed with the U.S. Patent Office. That focus is on associations, authority, groups, and trust. And if we take a look at the U.S. patent filing of 2012 published by Google in 2014, we see this. What we're looking at here is the 2012 patent filed with the U.S. Patent Office, and then it was subsequently published on Google's website in 2014, just about a year ago today. Um, so this is the Panda algorithm 
uh, abstract, and it is clearly denoted as a method of ranking search results. In fact, the closest the patent comes to talking about anything like a penalty is referenced as a group-specific modification factor. Now, the entire language of this is a bit torturous and recursive, but the language addresses plurality of groups of resources, independent links, uh, incoming links to resources in the group, count of reference queries, and finally, a group-specific modification factor. Now, what's going on here is that Google is looking at things in groups rather than in individual websites. Now, individual sites become members of a group, but your association with and your trust level established by membership in groups is a far more important factor than previously thought or known. And so even when you have links, where the links are coming from, what kind of relevance and trust and authority that is associated with those links is very important to this algorithm. Now, Google has a certain view of the web that many of us do not have. And in particular, the internet map at internet-map.net illustrates this, and you can probably guess that some of these larger circles represent big websites like Facebook and Google, YouTube, and you would be precisely correct in that assessment. Now, you'll notice that in this, this um, representation of the Internet, that large sites have a lot of sites clustered around them. And even smaller sites have many sites clustered around them. There's association here represented. Now, let's look at a niche like real estate and a well-known site in real estate to get an idea of the scale that we're dealing with. Zillow.com is generally regarded as the most authority uh, rate site in the internet regarding real estate. If you query up something about real estate in any particular location, you probably will see Zillow first. Now, Zillow is a large site, and you can see there are other sites associated with it and correlated in proximity in this representation again. There's Toll Brothers. These, these clustering effects are determined by links between sites and their relevance to the site they're clustered around. Now here you've got Trulia. Redfin, these are well-known names. Uh, Trulia is now the owner of Active Rain, And Zillow is the owner of Trulia. So there's a lot of real-world association, and there's a lot of association online as well, that there tend to be links between these resources that's the idea that Google is looking at, these kind of associations. Now, the Internet, we're looking at this little section of the Internet, and we think that we're looking at something big, but in perspective, if I start to look at the entire Internet, then you see there's Huffington Post, there's CNN, and Zillow has kind of dropped into the background, New York Times, LA Times. We keep pulling back. So you see a site like AOL, and finally you start to realize it's kind of expansive like the galaxy or the universe. It's very big, and here are these big sites, and if I ask you to point out where Zillow is, well, it's off this way somewhere, but where exactly might be difficult to pinpoint at this stage because the Internet's very big. So Google has to pick from all of these websites to any particular query they have to pick the right set of sites to put on page one. And that's why the algorithm is complex, because the Internet is big and the relationships between sites are complex, not simple. So let's look at what the algorithm is. This is kind of a representation of what Google's looking at is relationships, almost like a neural network. And even this, because this representation is singular, it fails to cover the scope. Maybe a little bit more like this, where you've got various groups and they link to each other. And in a particular group, one of that group is you. But there are associations with other groups. So there are independent links to resources in the group. Now, old school SEO is something like on the right where you build more and more links to a central target. 
the way that Google is trying to implement the Panda algorithm and all of its algorithms is to look at associations and establish authority and trust. Now what we're doing on our highest level of SEO service is we are aligning with that idea with a model something more like this. Um, because I work so much in real estate, we're including Active Rain here as an authority site, as part of the Trulia and Zillow alliance. But there are other sites too, like Rebel Mouse and Storify and Scoop It and dozens and dozens of others. And you see we have Facebook and YouTube and even private blog networks, privately owned websites, all of which have more authority and more trust. And so it would be natural for links between these sites and your own site, if your site's worthwhile, to have those levels of trust associated with it. And then what Google really looks at is a plurality of groups of resources. So the most successful um, approach to promoting a website is to be in membership of this these pluralities and they're dynamic they're always different because the web is a dynamic and kind of a structured chaos there's chaos but it, it it happens in a kind of structured order determined by these relationships and that's that's what counts without digging too deep into the mechanics of this you'll see that links are not just to a single target page, although there are links to the targets, but you see that there are links between other entities too that are not specifically directed at the target, but rather links between these entities. This is the way normal trust and normal relationships between websites works so that we have this neural network effect that we see here. So that's my synopsis of the basic model of the Panda algorithm. We come to modification factors. You start with no modification factors and as questions are asked about the quality of a particular group, modification factors can be applied at various levels and in varying intensities to the point where it does have the effect of being a penalty. So there are things to avoid those modification factors and there are things that we can do to make sure that we're in the the Ivy League club rather than, you know, a, a back alley bar in terms of our associations with other sites on the internet. So that's the effect uh, of a good set of relationships versus a bad set of relationships that we want to have quality relationships with our websites. If you have bad relationships, it shows up, it becomes more and more increasingly difficult to rank and finally impossible. There's where you start to have to do detoxification of a website if it's worth saving or just starting over and establishing a much better profile because those profiles are important. This is Dave Keyes, SEO expert. Hope this has helped you to understand the algorithms a little bit better. Talk to you soon. Yeah.